Hey everybody, so <clears throat> as promised, here's the uh, video of what I've learned about Thuricide. I said it very wrong in the last video. Bacillus thuringiensis is how it looks like it is supposed to be pronounced. Controls moth, larva, leaf-eating worms, and gypsy moths. Bacillus thuringiensis, subspecies, Crustaki. So you can see six million viable spores. What this product is, is uh, bacteria. It's live bacteria. It's actually a bacteria that is prevalent in nature. Actually, Monsanto's gone ahead and made a couple of plants that produce it in abundance to keep the worms away. Uh, that should be healthy for us. But this is a product that I studied hardcore today. I I called around, I called Bonide, who is the maker of this um, product, and they said that their 85% of their ingredients are proprietary and thus not shareable with the public, which is fine. And I called the... Uh, National Pesticide Hotline, I, I forget exactly what it is. If you're interested in that, put it in the comments. I'll give you the number for it. Uh, and talk to a girl over there that told me that um, it's it's just mainly water and some stuff that they put in there to uh, prevent the bacteria from dying while it's in the bottle. One thing that she told me, though, that I think is interesting and should be uh common knowledge among people that use products that have chemicals or anything else that can be considered dangerous, I guess. She said that products that say caution are the least of the dangerous products. They're the lowest of the low. If it doesn't say caution or any other word on the bottle, that means it's 100% safe. If it says caution, that means there are some risks but for the most part, it's safe. If it says warning, it's a little less safe than caution. And if it says danger, it's a little less safe than warning. So, or maybe a lot less safe than warning. Um, but that's good information that, that I got and I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I, then I called um, a local uh, garden center and talked to their resident insecticide uh, expert basically and uh, he told me that up until the day of harvest you can use this stuff and what you want to do is you want to put it into a pressurized sprayer and drench your buds uh, and then let that sit for a couple of days don't I mean if rain comes you gotta reapply it <clears throat> but it's just live bacteria it's not chemicals it smells weird it smells like uh, like a marker or like alcohol of some sort some people say it smells like gasoline. I don't really get that too much, but definitely has a, a smell to it. And I'm thinking that that's just the byproduct of whatever the bacteria are eating. And that is the product that they're releasing because more often than not, when bacteria release something or yeast release something, releases something, it's the, I don't know how fermentation works, but it's, it's there. Like it, it smells, it smells different. Definitely. Um, I'm going to try not to use this stuff, obviously, because I don't want to spray anything on my buds, but uh, if the caterpillars get worse, I'm going to have to do it. This says to use about a two, two to four teaspoons per gallon, so I'd probably go on the lower side and just go with two. Sorry about that. Um, for the first application, anyway, see how it does. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's just bacteria uh there there aren't any other videos on youtube that really explain how to use this stuff or how late into flowering you can use it um but from everything that i read today and the hours that i spent researching this stuff online um people have been using this stuff to drench their buds for a long time uh people have been using this stuff on other products for 100 years or something like that longer uh and there has never been any adverse effects to humans reported um but one and i think it was because they inhaled a, a, a shitload of it I, I don't know but um the insecticide expert 
at the garden center knows that I'm growing cannabis and knows that I'll be smoking the product. And he assured me that uh, he's done it and that he's heard of it being done uh, all the time. And uh, so, yeah, I think that this is a safe product to use. I think that uh, any of the BT products, as long as they don't have anything else in them, can be used this late into flowering if necessary. I think that it should be used in veg and maybe early flower to prevent the worms from coming in the first place. But since I didn't do that and I have the worms now, we may have to see how this stuff works. I'll keep you updated. Um, but again, everything that I've seen said that this is all right. This is good stuff to use uh, on your flowers up to the day of harvest, uh, apparently. Um, if I use it at all, um, and even if I don't use it because there's worm shit in my buds, I'm probably going to end up cleaning them this, this uh, season. But, uh, yeah, it, it goes away with UV rays, and it's water-soluble and all this other good stuff. So I don't feel hesitant at all to spray it onto my buds. I just don't want to if I don't have to. You know what I mean? I don't want to spray water onto my buds if I don't have to, but, you know, sometimes there is the need. Uh, so there you go. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys later.